I'm Michelle Vigneault, a professor in uh, Elizabethan studies at the University Lumière Lyon de in France. So the first book I'm going to talk about today is L'Invention de la Responsabilité. It's in French, meaning the invention of responsibility. Uh, it is a book which evolved from my PhD thesis um, and this study originated in a twofold observation. First, the word responsibility is nowhere to be found in Shakespeare or in his contemporaries, although the notion uh, was at the heart of the preoccupations in Elizabethan England. Second, the absence of the word in early modern documents has not deterred critics from analysing Shakespeare's plays in terms of the modern notion of responsibility, which, predictably enough, has led to a number of misconceptions. In this study, I have drawn on the methods of the French school uh, of historical anthropology, uh, developed by scholars in ancient Greek studies to attempt a redefinition of the notion of responsibility based on a network of synonyms used in the 16th century, which has led me to two sets of conclusions. On the one hand, the sense of what was required of the individual by the neatly delineated external duties inherited from the Middle Ages that were imposed upon him resulted in an objective juridical conception of responsibility. On the other hand, the religious reformation, which emphasized a personal relationship with God through the reading of the Bible, rather than the relationship mediated by the church uh, that had prevailed until then, was opening new paths, leading to the emergence of the modern individual and to a moral conception of responsibility, taking into account the autonomy of the subject. The 16th century was a time of transition and of uh, tension between these two conceptions, between growing aspirations uh, to judgment autonomy and powerful forces of resistance in the political, religious and social spheres. These issues, which form the subject matter of Shakespeare's tragedies, are already perceptible in the second tetralogy of historical plays, Richard II, the two parts of Henry IV and Henry V, in which he explores the upheavals that attend the change from a world in which authority proceeded from the legitimacy conferred by hereditary succession to a world in which the foundations of authority had to be reinvented. Through the dramatization of this situation, Shakespeare reveals how the traditional order, which had so far been held to be natural, stable and absolute, was beginning to be perceived as conventional, relative and transitory, and how these times of crisis between the decline of the old world and the advent of the new one introduced an era of uncertainty. The next book I'm going to talk about is an issue of Coup de Théâtre, a journal devoted to contemporary Anglophone theatre. It is a collection of essays by international scholars, which I co-edited, uh, dealing with Scottish playwright David Gregg's Dunsinane and other rewritings of Shakespeare's Macbeth. Dunsinane, which was written in uh, 2010, was premiered in French in 2020 at the Théâtre National Populaire de Villeurbanne, in uh, the Lyon metropolis. It is a sequel to Macbeth. Taking up where Shakespeare left off, 
Gray engages in a creative dialogue characteristic of postmodern aesthetics with Shakespeare's tragedy. The starting point of Dutzinane is the battle that leads to Macbeth's tragic demise, which raises the question, what then? Contrary to Shakespeare's tragedy, in which the death of the tyrant marks a return to order, in Dunsinane, it initiates a new kind of chaos. Drawing on a hint in Shakespeare's Macbeth, in which Malcolm, the rightful heir to the throne, belittles Macbeth's faults and draws a disparaging portrait of himself uh, for over 100 lines before revealing in a final twist that he was testing the loyalty of his interlocutor, Macduff, Greg works on this possibility of a weak, corrupt Malcolm. The play explores the consequences of the tyrant's death in terms um, of contemporary political, social and cultural issues, speculating on the reconstruction of a nation in the aftermath of the tyrant's death in 11th century Scotland with resonances with contemporary Iraq and Afghanistan. The volume also includes contributions on Gordon Bottomley's prequel, Gruach, uh, the Scottish medieval name of Lady Macbeth, on Heiner Müller's 1972 staging of Macbeth after Shakespeare, on Romanian playwright Silvio Pucaret's Yubu Rex with scenes from Macbeth, which contains passages from Shakespeare's Macbeth and from Alfred Jarry's King Yubu, a French play first performed in 1896, considered as a precursor to Dadaism, Surrealism, and the theatre of the absurd, as well as on adaptations of Macbeth in 21st century Greece, in a TV series, House of Cards, and in Adam Kay's film, Vice, from 2018.